What's going on guys? Uh, today I have something a little bit different. Uh, I have a person versus person uh, fight. It's going to be the F-18 Hornet piloted by myself against the uh, Mirage 2000 piloted by Antos. And uh, he was kind enough to send me his track file at the end of the fight so I'm kind of able to present the fight from two different perspectives which I think is pretty cool. It's not something you see every day. Uh, so yeah, we're gonna go ahead and watch the dogfight, and then well, it's not really a dogfight, but you know the fight, and then uh, at the end of it, we will look at the tack view like always and see what happened and what could have been done differently. Okay, guys, let's go ahead and get started. Nine four, uh, target zero eight zero range one elevation twenty three. Nine four, 
Alright guys, here's the tag view between me and uh, Antos, the Mirage pilot here. Uh, we're separated by about 67 kilometers at this point, and just before we get started, I want to talk about a couple things. Uh, as a lot of you already know, the Mirage does not carry Fox 3s, he carries Fox 1s and Fox 2s, the Super 530s and the Magic 2s. Uh, I'm carrying Fox 3s in the form of Amrams and uh, Sidewinders, my Fox 2s. So obviously I have a major range advantage on him, and I plan to use that to keep him defensive. My strategy here was going to be, uh, once I got closer, a little bit closer, I was going to put him defensive, force him defensive, keep him defensive, long enough for me to close this distance and hit him with either a sidewinder or a really close amram. And I was hoping that if I can continue to force him defensive and keep him defensive, it would be my decision how, when, and from where I engaged him and I'd be able to kill him without him even getting off a shot. Okay, so that was the plan. And it doesn't totally go like that, but we'll we'll have a look at that. Um, so this first missile here fires off at about 60 kilometers. And let's go ahead and remember this number for later, okay? 60 kilometers, 59 kilometers. And there's the first AMRAM fire, okay? This is way outside of my shoot queue, right? But I do this just to force him defensive. I'm going to go ahead and switch over to Antos, and I'll switch this over to myself. All right, so that uh, missile, that AMRAM's coming at him, and what he's going to do is invert, and he's going to start dropping countermeasures, and it looks like he's going to dive for the mountain cover there. He's going to go for some terrain masking. Okay, so a couple things to talk about here. Uh, that is an AMRAM, which means he has a tone in his plane that there's a missile coming. He should be able to, uh, at that point, uh, understand that it is a radar guided missile, it is not a heat seeker. So he does not need these flares that he's dropping here. Uh, the other thing to talk about is arguably he also does not need the chaff. Because of this distance, he has more than enough time to invert and go behind a mountain and never use a single flare. Uh, he had me locked up at this point as well, so he knew the distance. Okay, uh, He wouldn't have needed to drop any countermeasures on his way down. but. Regardless, he decides to do it. And also, dropping all this flare here, you're going to need these if this fight ends up going into a merge. And, you know, we're in a, gu in a Fox 2 fight here, a gunfight. He's going to need these flares here uh, for those close encounters with the Fox 2s. But he's wasting them here. And he's also wasting the chaff, arguably. Right? All right. But his uh, decision to go for the terrain masking at the mountain, that's fantastic. That's exactly what I would have done in that situation. I think that's a great decision. Uh, now, he actually goes behind the mountain. He's placed a mountain in between me and him, 
and he continues to drop countermeasures. As soon as you do this, you don't need this anymore. You don't need countermeasures. Okay, this is a waste of countermeasures and flares and chaff and everything. Uh, once you have a mountain in between you and him, those missiles are going to hit the side of the mountain. You're good. You'd be highly unlikely for a missile to come over the mountain and somehow get you. It would be next to impossible in DCS anyway. Um, okay, so what he's going to do, uh, the, the lock tone broke here, so he stopped dropping the countermeasures. He's now going to perform a U-turn, and he's going to try to come back nose is hot over the, the top of this mountain here. He's going to be smart, and he's going to keep his, his head down all the way across. He's not just going to peek up, right? He's going to hug the side of these mountains. He's going to come over, and you can see now he's turning in. Now his nose is hot, and he's coming at me. Okay, and let's have a look at this. Look at this. He's at 41 kilometers now. That's the distance between me and him. You remember we started at 60 kilometers. So by forcing him defensive and him doing all of this, uh, we've managed to, sh to shave about uh, 20 kilometers off the engagement distance. Now, he's going to come over the side of this mountain. I'm scanning over here. I managed to pick him up and lock him up. And as he comes over the peak here, I'm going to give him another AMRAM. Let's just wait for it. There it is. And he's going to break left. And once again, with the countermeasures, he's got chaff and flare. The flare he does not need. Uh, he's going to go in for that terrain masking again. He's going to hug the, the, the side of these mountains here. You can see he runs out of flares. He's down to just chaff. So if this fight ends up becoming a Fox 2 fight, he's in big trouble. All right, so he's trying to zoom over these mountains. He's not able to break the lock because these mountains are too high, and that one's too short. He doesn't break the lock until right around here. And that's it. That's where he breaks the lock. Okay. Now, look at our engagement distance, 15.3, all right? At 15.3 kilometers, like he's gonna come right over the peak of this mountain here, and right there, we're gonna call it 12.7 kilometers, okay? Um, in this situation, I've got the the bore sight of the uh, Hornet in AMRAM, for the AMRAMs, the bore sight mode, I have it looking at this general direction. I've made a guess as to where he's going to peek over the side of the mountain, and I'm aiming it there. The plane managed to lock him up, but this is not the situation I wanted to be in. I wanted to keep him defensive the entire time, and uh, he has managed to avoid the missiles while going defensive. And when he comes over the peak of this mountain, it's going to be a good old western uh, duel, right? It's going to be fastest gun in the west that's going to get the first kill. 12.7 kilometers is close enough for his Super 530s, and it's more than close for my AMRAMs, right? So he's actually, via these defensive maneuvers, has managed to even the odds here at 50-50. All right, so that's pretty impressive. Now he's going to come over. I already know the odds, and I'm going to immediately fire off my AMRAM. The second that I get a lock, I fire my AMRAM. You can see it's already coming off here, right there. You see that? Yeah, Mach 1.2. That AMRAM's already off at 11.4 kilometers. And he does the only thing he can do at this point, and that is fire off his Super 530. So there it is. He's going to fire off his two Super 530s, and they're going to come in. All right, so remember the one thing about these Super 530s is they're semi-active radar, which means if I can kill him, they require guidance from his plane to hit the target, which is me. If I kill him, there's no more guidance. These missiles become paperweights, okay? So you can see here he takes that AMRAM. Let's just see how fast it hits him. He's going to take that AMRAM at about Mach 2.8, 2.9. And right here, these missiles have lost track, and I'm safe, with like fractions of seconds to spare. You can see this one was probably going to get me too, if he hadn't died right here. If I had fired that AMRAM just a second later, this would have taken me out. But instead, it's just going to fly right by me. And this one already went stupid, so... All right, so that's going to be the video for today. Uh, great flying by Antos, uh, very nice defensive maneuvers, and great job evening those odds out at 50-50 at the end there. Uh, beautiful flying by him. Uh, I hope you guys enjoyed the video, 
and I'll see you next time.